Hello, welcome to Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. My name is Robert, the narrator, and welcome to this episode of Confessions. This is actually the second installment of Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master, episode one groundhog's day the rpg edition is what this episode is called but i also have an episode zero which was the first installment so if you want to check that out that'd be awesome uh, i talk about my history and the hobby but this is the first episode where we're going to jump into a topic that is kind of what the uh, the bread and butter i guess of this uh, part this vlog is going to be so thank you again uh for checking it out uh, this is uh, episode one, as I said, Groundhog's Day, the RPG edition. And what does that mean? Well, there was uh, a classic movie called Groundhog's Day, which starred Bill Murray. And in Groundhog's Day, Bill Murray was forced to relive the same day over and over and over again. Well, if you role play for long enough, hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but, but it, it can you may feel that you're playing the same systems or systems very similar to what you have played in the past over and over and over again or genres that you've played a great deal and it you could feel that your gaming is uh, lacking uh, a good amount of variety so that's what I'm going to talk about for this episode now uh, uh, I haven't role played uh, for about two months now. Uh, when I was role playing, I was uh, doing a campaign, play testing a fantasy RPG that I've been developing myself, and it was going fairly well. But we had some uh, scheduling conflicts uh, with the game, so we had to stop it, and that was two months ago. Uh, two weeks ago, I was sitting down and I was thinking to myself, wow, if we get uh, another uh, game going what what would I like to run and I was thinking to myself well right now I would really really love to run uh, Star Wars Edge of the Empire I uh, ran the beta for my friends uh, when the beta came out a while ago and they really didn't enjoy it because of the um, the unique dice system they, they really weren't feeling it and I was also thinking that I would love to do some flavor of the cipher system uh, the cipher system is the system that kind of powers the Numenera a role-playing game by Monty Cook Games and their cipher system rule book the generic rule book that allows you to uh, run almost any genre supers uh, uh, horror, modern, or fantasy just came out. I was thinking maybe I want to run that. I ran Numenera for about 14 weeks for my group, but we were kind of split on enjoying that. And so I came to the realization that wait a minute, I may actually have literally run out of RPGs in my collection that I really want to want to run that I could get a consensus. Uh, to run uh, from my group and that was kind of a scary thought I've literally gone through my entire collection uh, because in the last two years or so we have revisited some of my favorite RPGs of all time Shadowrun, Earthdawn, uh, Marvel uh, Saga and Street Fighter which was uh, published by White Wolf Games I've run all of those games in the last uh, two years or so and none of them really uh, stuck or went well with my particular group so I've run uh, some more recent games that I uh, was really excited about I've run some older games which really didn't go well and to be honest with you they're older games so uh, they definitely have uh, some flaws with them uh, in their design, but I kind of um, ignored the flaws anyway because I'm so in love with some of the games uh, that I ran that I was willing to overlook some of the flaws, but it's difficult to get someone who is not as, as nostalgic about a particular game as you are to overlook those flaws, so those flaws really kept the game for um, uh, sticking with my particular group of friends. Interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, Street Fighter 
the role playing game published by White Wolf Publishing many years ago, I have a friend who wrote for um, for the game, and he was able to get me in on a, a early play test with the designers of the game. It was an amazing time. I purchased the role playing game when it came out many, many, many years ago. Uh, you can look it up on Google uh, when the game was released, but it's no long no longer in print. Big fan of Street Fighter Two, the video game, and uh, when I purchased the book, I had my friend sign it, and he signed. It, Robert here's the game now give me my family back and it was really funny it's an awesome game and I really enjoyed playing it has some flaws uh, I enjoyed it but my friends did not so I have gone through my entire collection of our uh, role-playing games and I don't think I could get my friends to to try something so that's kind of a scary thought the last um, great hope I guess you could say uh, for me um, uh, to run something would be a science fiction role-playing game that I uh, kick-started toward the end of last year called Faith the RPG it's a science fiction role-playing game in a box that actually uses cards for um, for task resolution and the game is gorgeous so that's kind of really my last hope for getting my group to try something new and different and keep a little variety going in our in our uh, gaming but other than that that's pretty much it and I have gotten to the point myself and I'll talk about this as a, a as a trick or tip that um, I don't really want to go out and spend another sixty dollars on a game or under the um, the hopes with the hopes that it'll stick and my friends will want to play it so um, I'm really kind of you know kind of uh, have an issue here uh, at an impasse but I'm going to give you some tricks and tips that will help you with this issue if you find yourself in this situation or if you want to prevent um, uh, getting into this situation that could help you uh, bring some variety to your gaming uh, so you don't get stuck in that uh, Groundhog's Day situation so uh, the first and most obvious uh, trick or tip that I have for this circumstance and you've probably already uh, thought about it the most obvious thing is to find a new group to game with uh, luckily today it is uh, is easier than it has ever been to find new groups to play with and I'm not suggesting that you totally leave the group that you're currently playing with unless you've gotten to the point where it's just your tastes and styles are so different from the other members or the majority of the other members of your group that you think you really uh, just can't make it work I would never suggest that you leave a group that you're having some enjoyment or especially if they're made up of friends I would never suggest that but if, if you think that you've reached your limit and you have to, then you have to move on. Um, but, you know, of course, you stay in contact with your friends. You do other things with them. You just find another group to game with. I was thinking more uh, along the lines. Hopefully you would find additional gaming that would give you a little bit more variety. And as I said, it's easier now than it has ever been to find new games. Uh, you can with social networks, Facebook, uh, Twitter. G plus you can put a uh, events page up on your social network invite players to the type of games that you would like to run or post the fact that you're looking for a game to get into and maybe you can find yourself a new game something that you've always wanted to try or wanted to run and get a group together that way social networks are amazing uh, for things like that also uh, online you have several virtual tabletops uh, like Roll20 or you have a uh, Google Hangouts or Fantasy Grounds and you can go um, to those virtual uh, tabletops uh, some of them have games posted or and you can look for games to join or start your own game and post your own game and play online which is really great for people uh, who have tough schedules so you can also uh, do that again create your own game for others to join or look for a game on a virtual tabletop online and it's a lot more convenient than maybe going out to your friendly local game store uh, trying to work through your schedule and, and go out to your a local game store you can sit in the, the comfort of your own home 
and play something on a virtual tabletop with friends or people that you don't know. And uh, speaking of your local game store, obviously that is a, a fantastic resource to uh, join a gaming night at your friendly local game store. You can join a Shadowrun Missions or a D&D Encounter or something of that nature. Or along with posting on your social networks, you can also post something in your friendly local game store looking for a group or to kind of advertise the type of game that you want to play to see if you can get uh, some gamers. So that uh, is the most obvious resolution uh, for this uh, issue if you want to get a little bit more variety. Find another group to do some additional gaming and if, uh, if worse comes to worse, if you have to leave your current group, it's, you know, it's not a great thing, but sometimes you may have to you may have to do that. So that is my first uh, tip for you. The se second tip is, and this is not only good for a situation where you find that you're not having the the type of variety in your gaming that you want, but also just a general tip for being a good game master is to learn what the guys and gals you play with like. Uh, communication is the key when you are taking part in a cooperative uh, hobby like role-playing. You have to know what the people you play with like, especially if you're going to be uh, a game master. If you have uh, a group that likes science fiction or likes superheroes or uh, modern games, you should know that. And you should already know that if you are the game master or have game mastered for this group uh, before. It's kind of a dereliction of duty if you're the game master and you don't know that basic information about the people you play with. What, hey, what do they like? It's, it's basic information that every game master should have. And if you don't, I, I don't want to be harsh, but you're not doing your job if you don't know what everyone in your group likes you have to and this really helps keeping uh, things fresh and getting a little bit of variety into your gaming if you can use that information of your group's likes and dislikes and kind of cater uh, to those likes and dislikes so that kind of goes uh, to our next tip after you know and you communicate clearly with your group and you want to be transparent and open with them about their likes and dislikes and your likes and dislikes what you're going to want to do is tailor the games you want to play to your players now what you're going to want to do it, it could be a little tricky but after finding out uh, what your players like and don't like you want to also incorporate what you like and don't like into the mix and try to find a game that caters to both parties hopefully um, you know you you may not even need this uh, this particular episode of my vlog if you're in a group who everybody is on the same page. You know, everybody is, hey, guys, we're going to all play D&D. That's all we want to play. We're going to play it morning, noon, and night. If you're in that type of group, then this, uh, this episode may not be as helpful to you. Um, but as I said, some of these tips are just general great tips. Uh, but if you're in that type of group, uh, fantastic you're enjoying yourself you don't need this advice but if you're in a group where not everybody sees eye to eye and it's always a struggle uh, to bring new games to the table or to get the group to try new and different things and be a little more broad in what they will play this is perfect for you and you should tailor what you want to bring to the table to the tastes of your players and if you can come together with some kind of amalgamation of what your players like and what you like that would be uh, fantastic and that will make it so that bringing new and varied games to the table is not an uphill battle the next thing that you're going to want to do once you know what type of games uh, your players like and you try to tailor your suggestions uh, to them with with a mix of what you also enjoy you're going to want to use plenty of player aids and what I mean by that is when you're bringing a new game to the table and you're trying to get your group to try something that they haven't tried before or may not be 100% what they would enjoy, you want to make sure that you make the process of them learning this game uh, really, really simple. You want to print out 
uh, any uh, basic rules information or mechanics on a handout that you can hand to each player so as you're showing them the game and they're playing the game they can refer to these rules so that it doesn't become a headache to learn a new game that's really going to smooth over uh, the process I think that may have been the mistake that I made with Star Wars Edge of the Empire if you are familiar with the game you will know that it has a very unique uh, dice mechanic a very unusual one the game is a fantastic mix of narrative and uh, fiddly mechanics that I really like um, and I think the problem that I had is that I didn't give out uh, any any player aids to kind of smooth over the process of them learning the game what all of the dice do interpreting the dice and I think that was my uh, that was my mistake um, so I, I re I'm really kicking myself for that I actually uh, was on the uh, verge of starting another uh, Star Wars Edge of the Empire game with some guys that had I had played with before on Sunday nights and I made sure that I gave them uh, player handouts describing the mechanics of the games and some of the basic rules and they picked up on the mechanics like that now it could be that those that, that those guys on that uh, Sunday night game that I was trying to pick up are less experienced gamers so they're not really jaded and they have uh, I didn't have to teach them to unlearn all that you have learned you know but um, and with my with my regular group who really couldn't grok uh, edge of the empire they some of those guys are kind of jaded grognards and they they kind of uh, at least some at least some of them um, are used to doing things a certain way so they're kind of jaded and I think that may have played into it too but not having player aids to smooth over uh, the learning of the, the unique mechanics of this game did not help so if you're going to try uh, to introduce a variety of games and systems and genres to your uh, to your players to your friends you're going to want to smooth that over with some uh, with some handouts most role-playing games will have a brief uh, description of the mechanics or the rules of the game or you can put something together uh, yourself and hand it out to your players it's a must and I think the um, something else that you're going to want to do once you have learned what your players enjoy, tailor your recommendations to them. Make sure that you hand out uh, plenty of uh, material to help them learn the game as easily as possible. You're going to want to point out aspects of the game that your players will like. Now that you know uh, what they like, you're going to want to point out to them those things. For instance, I have uh, some guys in my group who are uh, very um, rules-like players. They, they like rules-like mechanics. So when I was running Numenera, I tried to point out to these guys, if you know, in case it wasn't obvious, that the way you can play Numenera, and Numenera uses a D20 for task resolution, you can literally roll a D20 and take the number that you get there you don't even have a modifier that you have to add to that roll you can roll the number and be done so it doesn't get much more rules like than that that's one reason that I love Numenera is because you a player can choose to opt into more complexity but just flinging a d20 and moving on you can play Numenera that way and I tried to point that out to some of the guys who liked uh, more rules like games so that they could see aspects of the game that may you know may they may enjoy um, another mechanic that I try to uh, show my rules like players uh, was really great to keep the game rules like is the namesake of the cipher system the ciphers in the cipher system what ciphers are are one use gadgets that you find as you're exploring as kind of rewards and they're one shot items like you can find a uh, ray emitter uh, or a force field wall or some type of injection uh, unit that could you know give you you can inject yourself and it gives you um, greater strength for a period of time and it's a one-use item you use it and it's done and I really like that because I think what Monty Cook was trying to do with that design is to give uh, PCs more options without wearing weighing down their characters with permanent 
options so then you get paralysis by analysis because you have all of these permanent abilities and you're like what am I gonna do am I gonna do this am I gonna do that this turn am I gonna do that this turn uh, so it's a one-use item you read it you use it and you're done so it gives your character variety but keeping the game simple and I thought that uh, my rules like players would like that and they did not but uh, so it, it didn't work in this uh, in this um, situation however I would always recommend that you point out to players aspects of the game that you're trying to get them to try uh, that they would like you don't have to uh, beat it to death but just point it out in case it's not obvious and maybe that'll help you uh, a little bit there and I think the um, the last uh, point that I'll make for you to try uh, to keep you from suffering my fate uh, is to uh, try if you want to try games what you should do or new games don't go out and spend sixty or fifty dollars for a rule book um, hoping that you will uh, you will get your friends to play it a lot of new games when they come out have a quick start adventure uh, that will uh, give you some of the basic mechanics of the game will give you pre-generated uh, characters excuse me and you can get that pre uh, pre-built adventure or that the quick start rules of the game and use that to see if your players uh, are going to want to play because as I said at this point I really can't see myself uh, going out and spending money on another game uh, because I, I just I just can't have another game on my shelf that I'm not going to play so if, if I, there is another game that comes out that interests me I think I'll go out try to find some quick start rules and and sit down for a one-shot session with my friends and see if they enjoy it and if they do then you can go out and get the rule book so that will cut back on the frustration it'll keep some money in uh, in your wallet and uh, by all means if it turns out that your friends love the game or uh, love the idea of playing it then you can go out and uh, and play the game or, or, or purchase the game so those are all of my tips to keep you out of Groundhog's Day, the curse of Groundhog's Day with your gaming. Find, uh, you can go out and find a new group or an additional group to play with. You can learn uh, what the uh, players in your group like and then tailor the games that you want to suggest to them to their likes and hopefully mix some of your likes in there as well because if you if you don't enjoy a particular game or a particular genre you, you're not going to be able to convince anyone else to enjoy it uh, the GM has to have fun as well use lots of game aids I can't stress that enough make it easy for your players to learn uh, a new game and then try to point out to them if it's not obvious the aspects of the game that you think that they uh, will enjoy because you know them so well you can make those recommendations and save yourself some money and whenever possible whenever you want to try a new game go out and try to find a quick start uh, version of the game and my group is it's it's crazy my group is a perfect 50 50 split of the type of players that they are uh, fifty percent of the guys that I play with and I've been uh, we've had our group together for many many years uh, most of them are guys that introduced me to the hobby and that I met through a, a local gaming club globe um, fifty percent of these guys are up for anything they're up for mostly any genre any system I think some of those guys are getting together to role play just because it's what we're doing and it's an opportunity for longtime friends to get together so they're really not there for the role playing they're just there because we're getting together but and some of the guys in that category of up for anything really do like role playing and and they're just open uh, for for different types of experience and then the other half of my gaming group the other uh, 50 percent they are the guys who like what they like and that's it um, so it's a perfect split of guys who are up for anything and guys who there's a very small uh, category of games uh, that they will commit to for a long uh, term campaign so it makes things really tricky to get really great variety uh, in our gaming because of the 50 50 split uh, of my group and 
something else the last thing that I'll uh, talk about this is not a tip or trick this is really just um, some real information that I'm going to pass on to you something else that if you have a group that is a mixture of players and, and game masters or you I guess if you have multiple game masters in your group something that you may want to be um, uh, leery of is the fact that you may have a game master or two in your group who would prefer to run uh, most or all of the time and as I said communication in this type of cooperative endeavor is really important it's the only way you're gonna get some great gaming done as if everyone is transparent and honest with what they want what they like and what they dislike but if you're a game master in a group with multiple game masters you probably would not want to be honest about your feeling of only wanting to run all of the time because you don't want to step you wouldn't want to step on anyone else's toes or hurt anyone else's feelings by saying hey I'm just gonna run all the time you know take it or leave it and unfortunately you know because someone doesn't want to step on anyone's toes they may not be completely honest about that that feeling of wanting to run all of the time so it could be fairly difficult to ferret out someone who has that attitude it may you may have a, a, a hint that someone feels that way even though they don't say it for instance if one of the other GM's in your group is the guy who's always shooting down uh, everyone else's ideas and you know he may he or she may be doing it so that they can get their idea through so they can fulfill their want to just run all the time they don't really want to play anyone else's game that may give you a clue that you have a GM in your group who would prefer to run all the time but doesn't want to be honest about it because he doesn't want to uh, hurt anyone else's uh, feelings but if you feel that is going on and I'm not saying you know that it is or is not I can't tell for any uh, particular group and as I said if someone is not being transparent about it it's hard to ferret out but if you feel that that may be going on what you should do is respectfully and diplomatically talk to the person uh, and maybe pull them aside or call them uh, when you're not meeting together uh, with your group and say hey man would you prefer to be running most of the time because I noticed that you don't seem to um, enjoy other people uh, running or you shoot down a lot of other people's ideas and you don't want to be accusatory as I said you want to be respectful and polite if you think uh, that that's going on and if the person uh, says no nah, that's not what's going on I'm just I'm just super uh, picky then you okay cool you know uh, that's that's fantastic I just wanted to make sure because if that's the case maybe we can work something out and if the person admits that yeah I would prefer to run you may have an issue because most group groups with multiple game masters they want to uh, kind of share running duties they you'll uh, run a campaign for a certain amount of time and then someone else will take over and so on and so forth there's uh, several different tactics that other groups use so you may it may be a situation where you have to sit down with the rest of the group and hash that out in a respectful tone and hopefully if you're friends uh, no one is alienated no one gets angry no one storms out but I just want to let you know that I that can be a possibility and it can hinder your ability to have as much variety in your gaming as you could have. Uh, so uh, this was uh, another uh, episode, episode one uh, of Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I can't thank you enough for checking out, uh, things out and I hope the advice that I've uh, given you is a little helpful. I think a lot of uh, the information that I gave you can be generally helpful for any Game Master but particularly useful in trying to keep your gaming fresh and, and varied. Uh, so thank you again uh, for joining me and uh, this is Robert the Narrator uh, signing out. Uh, good night or good evening wherever you are.